Hey there, Agile can openers. We are about to open a can of knowledge today on Agile Bytes, the podcast sponsored by Integrity Inspired Solutions, where we build software in an agile manner day in and day out. We talked a few episodes ago about wanting to change the focus of the podcast uh, a little bit to look at agile issues from a management point of view and communicate things to management that they may need to know about those topics. And that is still the plan. We are still doing that. However, we got such a good response from all of you about that episode. So many of you had suggestions for topics that we hadn't discussed yet in kind of the main thrust of Agile Bytes. So we're just kind of working through those here in the next episode or two. We will probably make that transition. But this is a request that came from a listener that we talk about this. This is something they're dealing with at their organization. It is a little bit of a niche topic, but I think that the principles behind it are, are really good to have in your heads and be able to articulate to your teams whether or not this is a specific issue for you. The issue we're going to talk about is should we be slicing stories horizontally or vertically? Or does it even matter? Do we do both? Let me define our terms real quick. When we talk about a story or a requirement or whatever being sliced horizontally, we're talking about them being sliced by architectural layer. So if you think about software, most software has some kind of UI, which is usually a screen. Although, you know, if, if your product is an API platform, the quote unquote UI might be your actual endpoints, right? Then there's usually a middle tier of some kind, which has your business logic and things like that. And then you have your back end, which is usually data persistence of some kind. And so when we're talking about slicing a story or thinking about a requirement horizontally, we're thinking about the individual layers that story comprises. Slicing vertically means that we are slicing by a small unit of functionality that drills all the way down. So it's a piece of functionality, but it's the whole package. It's, it's the UI, it's the middle tier, it's the back end. It's everything, everything that needs to happen in order for that capability to be delivered, but that capability might be a very, very narrow kind of thing. And we can even think about MVPs and product in, in these similar terms. You know, is an MVP like a broad collection of functionality that's very lightweight? Is it uh, a piece of functionality that goes all the way down? Is it a user journey that goes all the way to the end? Or is it the first parts of several user journeys? So this sort of horizontal, vertical paradigm you can kind of use in a lot of different ways. But here, we're actually talking about, about it in terms of our user stories. What should our user stories reflect? And if a user story is large, is it okay to slice it up horizontally? Or do we need to stick with vertical slicing? Is one better than the other, et cetera, et cetera? Here's what this usually looks like in the wild. If you find a team that is slicing their stories horizontally, or at least that is an option for their stories, then you will usually find things like UI stories, right? Like the story is to build the screen, but to not actually have it functional. So it, it looks like that sort of thing. A lot of teams will divide like the front end from the back end, or depending on the way your solution is architected, you might divide up the front end, the middle tier and the back end. Just kind of depends. But usually that's your telltale sign, right? There's usually somewhere in there a user story that's about making the screen, but the screen is not functional. In fact, I would say anytime your user story says do this, but it's not functional, you're probably slicing your stories horizontally in some way or another. It can also look like subdividing things into very, very narrow things that need to be done. For example, I worked with an organization once. They had a scrum master who really advised their teams to make their user stories things like add this button, add this form field, you know, add this database table. The kind of things that we might think of as like subtasks at best, they want to make a user story for like every little thing that needed to happen in order to deliver you know, I don't know, the screen, right? Or or the the overall functionality. So those are all examples of like horizontal slices. Vertical slices are what most of us are used to, where the the vertical slice is a is a capability and everything that needs to happen in order to deliver that capability. But that capability might be very narrow. It might be a very, very small atomic granular piece of functionality. When we slice stories horizontally, there are a lot of issues with that. And there's a lot of risk that we incur 
that the organization incurs when we slice them horizontally. One of the issues is when we slice our stories horizontally, we are already prescribing an implementation because in order to slice horizontally, I have to define things about the user interface or about the architecture of the thing that we're building. Being able to slice horizontally depends on me having figured that out already. If we have that figured out already, then user stories are not really buying us anything because the whole point of a user story is to capture a very small business capability. And then we figure out from a software perspective, the best way to deliver that capability in terms of software. So your user stories should not say really anything about like buttons or drop downs or screens or things like that. There are obviously exceptions to this, depending on the domain of your product. You may be creating a product that enables software development, right? Or pertains to software development or pertains to databases, right? Databases might be the domain of your product. So yeah, depending on what your product does, there might be exceptions to that. But generally speaking, for most software that isn't specifically dedicated to a technical purpose for a technical audience, our user story should not be talking about technical things. They should be talking about capabilities that our software is gonna deliver. So if I slice it horizontally, then I've already specified the implementation for this. I've already said there's gotta be this screen, it's gotta have this stuff on it, gotta have this database, yada, yada, yada. So we've already removed most of the value from user stories if we're slicing horizontally. The other issue we run into is that slicing horizontally potentially lengthens our feedback loop, right? One of the reasons that user stories are small pieces of functionality all the way through is because we wanna get it in front of somebody as soon as possible. The reason we wanna do that is because A, we get feedback as soon as possible, which means we can pivot as soon as possible. The other thing is, is that we're getting value to them as soon as possible, right? We may decide we may make a business decision not to release those user stories individually for various reasons, but nevertheless, they should be releasable and we should be able to get that value directly to the users very quickly. You know, for example, we built an application some time ago for a very large financial institution and they were managing HSA brokers and HSA policies and things like that. And one of our stories was to give them the ability to add brokers into the system. Well, this was a brand new system, right? So just releasing that was valuable. They could be adding brokers while we were building out the ability to delete brokers, update brokers, things like that, right? So we got that value to them right away. They were able to be productive right away, even though there were very vital capabilities that they didn't have yet. Those are the things that small vertical stories buy us. When you make them horizontal, we lose a lot of that, or at least we potentially lose a lot of that. Because if you build a non-functional UI, you might be able to get some feedback on that, but it's just feedback about the UI. You, you don't know if you've done anything right. And the user certainly can't use the UI for anything to give you feedback. So it's not really any different than a prototype might be or something like that, right? And for sure, you know, if your story is about developing a database table, you're definitely not getting any feedback on that, right? That doesn't even exist as far as the users are concerned. So you're potentially lengthening that feedback loop and you are potentially delaying the delivery of value. Both things are anathema to agile software development, right? Now, if you don't need that, if you're in a situation where you're like, hey, we've got all this functionality that we've decided to build. The feedback that we're gonna get, we might tweak the UI here and there, but we're not gonna meaningfully change the product and we're gonna release all this in one big batch when it's all done or something like that. Then yeah, but at that point, it really doesn't matter how, how you structure things. You you don't need agility to do that. that that's just straight up waterfall, really. <laughs> so you don't need user stories for that to begin with. But just to say that when, when we have a bunch of stories sliced horizontally, then people are like building database tables and maybe they build all the database tables or something, you know? And so we're lengthening the time at which we can get feedback. We're lengthening the time in which we're delivering value. And especially the long delay on the feedback loop, it incurs greater risk. We are building out more things without getting feedback to validate that we are building the right things. I've used the analogy before with organizations that if you are building software without feedback, 
It's kind of like building out a pier without putting supports under it. Like how far out do you want to build that pier before you put supports under it? Not very far, right? But the longer you build, the more of a pier you're building out and building out and building out without any supports, the more likely it is to collapse, right? And it's the same way when we're building software without feedback, without that validation that we did build it right or without the information that we didn't build it right, here's the right way to build it. We're investing more time, we're investing more money, we're investing more infrastructure into something we might have to roll back. I mean, let's say we build the whole database for this app and then we start building screens. And as we're building screens, the user notices, oh, wait, you know, we forgot these 10 fields or, oh, the way you've structured this functionality isn't right. And, you know, these, this, these pieces of information we don't really collect anymore, but these other pieces of information actually go with this other piece of functionality or whatever. Like you may have to restructure some key things in that database, depending on what kind of feedback you get back or delete things. Or maybe you built out a bunch of tables that you end up not even using. So horizontally sliced stories really ramp up the risk as far as those things are concerned. And then the last issue we have or an issue that we have with slicing stories horizontally is that Anything that you do from a standpoint of metrics and delivery, even if you're doing like story points and velocity, which like, as you know from me, I'm not a big fan of, but even if you're doing that, much less, you know, flow metrics and Monte Carlo simulations and things like that, your data set is not the delivery of capabilities that the user wants. Your data set is the delivery of these pieces, right? So if I'm looking at my velocity, I can't tell you like when certain features or capabilities are going to be delivered. I might be able to guess at how many database tables we might have done in the next sprint, or I might be able to tell you, you know, hey, by the end of the month, we should have added 10 non-functional screens, but I can't tell you when things are actually going to be delivered. And if you've ever had a frustrating conversation with stakeholders trying to explain when certain things are gonna be delivered, just imagine how frustrating it is when the only data you have to work from is at the level of things like database tables, API endpoints, and non-functional screens. I mean, at the end of the day, a horizontal story isn't even a story, right? I mean, what user has said, you know what I really need is a database table that I can stick data into, or what I really need is a screen that doesn't work. I was really hoping you could pony one of those up. You know, I'd really love to have a screen that doesn't do anything, but that I can look at. That would be awesome. Could you give me that? Users don't ask for those. Those are not stories users tell. The stories users tell are, here are things that I get done, right? As part of my job or as part of my hobby or the kinds of games I like to play or whatever it is, whatever it is, the software that we're building, those are the things that users talk about. Those are the things that users want. They don't ask for that other stuff. So why are we writing quote unquote user stories about these things that no user has ever asked for ever? Well, generally the reason that we do that is because someone has already figured out what we're going to give to the users, whether the user has asked for this capability or not, right? Or whether this is the, the manner in which they've asked for it. We've already solved the problem for them. And then that's what enables us to actually slice these things horizontally. However, when we look at vertically sliced user stories, which is generally the way these things go, right? Like the, the area of functionality may be very narrow, but we're gonna give you something that's actually functional. This is the cure for all of these ills, right? A vertical user story focuses on the business capability, not the implementation. We don't need to know what the software implementation is. We just need to understand the capability and all the things that have to be true in order for that capability to be delivered, to be enabled. And then we can come up with screens and database tables and all that stuff in response to what the user needs. We're software de developers, we're software designers. We, we can create that software. We don't need the user to do that for us. You can get feedback as soon as that story is ready. You can use that story if you wanted to as soon as that story is ready. And all your metrics and projections and things like that that you might use to communicate with stakeholders or, or product managers or project managers or, or marketing who needs to know when certain things are going to be ready or whatever, they're all at the level that everyone cares about, right? They're, they're at the level of delivered value, of delivered capabilities, not at the level of databases and, and UI elements and things like that. So 
if you haven't caught it by now, let me be explicit. I don't think there is usually a great reason to slice user stories horizontally. I think all it does is incur more risk and delay value, and it does not provide you any useful information. It's just a way developers might like to think about their work, but you know, tough. We, we develop software for users and the capabilities that they need drive everything else about our process or should. I'd like to close with a story. And I may have shared this in other episodes before, but when my two sons got to an age where they could help with chores like, you know, shoveling the driveway when it snows, it snows in Kansas City from time to time. And, you know, your, your driveway gets full of snow and you have to clear it. You know, at the time I was married, we had a two car garage with two garage doors. And so my sons were old enough to help shovel the driveway. So we'd get them out there. And what they would do is one of them would take one side of the driveway, the other would take the other side and they would start shoveling, but they would get tired halfway out and they would stop. So I had two sides of the driveway halfway shoveled. Nobody could get out, right? This had no value to me, right? I still had to go out and, and clear out one side of the driveway before anybody could get out. Now, what if instead of splitting their efforts, they had both done one side? Well, we would have had a whole side done and somebody could get out, right? If there was an emergency or something like that, we would have delivered value. But when they both just did a piece of what needed to be done to deliver that value, it was the same as having no value at all. And that's what we need to keep in mind when we're thinking about things like user stories. Yes, when we build software, we do have to think about the different pieces that we need to build in order for that to happen. We have to think about database tables. We have to think about API endpoints and domain layers and repository patterns and, and UI elements and things like that. We do have to break the stories down into those things in order to build the software. But from a delivery standpoint, we need to be thinking vertically. Delivering a database or database tables helps nobody and, and we can't get feedback on it. And honestly, developers need to quit creating the database first and in most cases anyway. So when you're thinking about your user stories, if you're tempted to slice them horizontally, my recommendation is not. Unless you have a very specific situation where this just makes a lot of sense to do it this way. And like I said, sometimes like your product might suggest it, if your product is an API platform, your stories might look a little different than like full stack software user stories, which is fine. But generally speaking, if you're if you're building full stack software for users and it's not on a specifically technical domain, you want your stories to be vertical. You want them to define full fledged capabilities and not pieces that by themselves don't actually do anything. Thanks everyone for listening to Agile Bytes. Agile does sometimes bite, but we don't think it always has to. If you enjoyed what you heard today, don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast on whatever platform you happen to be using. And if you can, leave us a comment because we'd love to hear your feedback. What things would you like to hear about? What things did you hear that were valuable to you today? You can also head over to integrityinspired.com to sign up to our email list. But that's all for today, folks. We'll see you next time.